We're back with another episode of Plastic Surgery Uncensored. I'm Monique Marvez, and this is Dr. Raban. And today, we're circling back around to massive weight loss because it's so relevant, and we're, we're just going to have to keep coming here. It's important. Well, I mean, I think the reality is the goal of the show mm-hmm. is, as it says, to discuss topics that are relevant to our listeners. And the reality is that in America today, obesity is an epidemic possibly an endemic, it's 50% of the country. And then we have subcategories of obesity, morbid obesity, super morbid obesity. And we are so lucky today um, to have one of my patients who is courageous enough to come on the show and help us get an insight and an understanding of the journey. Because let me tell you, this is a journey. Getting to a place where you are overweight is its own journey. Mm -hmm. And then coming back down the mountain is another journey. And then undergoing the body transformation to get to your happy place is yet another journey. So uh, it's a a long process. I know. So Alejandra. Yes. Are you there, honey? I am here. Yes. Awesome. So thank you again for so much for coming on and joining us on this segment. And we're going to Let's get into this. Let's let's start with the journey now, Alejandra. You were you were quite large. You weren't just chubby. You were quite large. Yes, I was. I was around four hundred and eighteen pounds. What? You yeah. and you're well. Good for you that you can say that. And and what Thanks. was? May I ask? How did you find yourself in that position? Are you a psychological eater? Like what? What is the? Walk me through how you go from. You know, adorable little girl. You sound quite, uh, you know, energetic and good. Uh, to four hundred plus pounds. Walk me, th- walk me there. You know, growing up uh, in a Hispanic household, my mother is from Honduras, my father is uh, from Argentina. Uh, we always ate very late. Always ate a lot of carbs all the time. And when I was about six or seven. You know, it was chubby, it was cute, it was normal. But then afterwards, once I started turning 10 or 11, I was just way over 250 pounds. I was well overweight. And it just became a point where food was my go-to. It was it made me so happy to eat. And I would buy sweets. And, and my, my parents, my mom would see it as, as an issue. But my father, on the other hand, would see it as like, you know, this makes her happy. You know, we're going to help her out here and, you know, solve her problems in a way, if I, if I think so now. Uh, but it was a, a way for me, as you say, psychologically, it made me so happy. I was just so wow. happy all the time when I was eating. So it's like a drug. Food was like your drug of choice. Yeah, definitely. Oh, a hundred percent, a million percent. And then, so, but the question then that I that we ask is kind of it's kind of I guess we can akin it to a drug because the reality is that there is food for certain people is kind of an addictive thing. There's always the post eating crash, which is when you're eating, you felt good, but presumably at some point you either whether it was on a scale or when you wore clothes or when you were somewhere, right. I'm sure there was a, when, at what point did you feel like, uh Oh, I don't, I'm not happy. I'm not. Cause listen, the truth of the matter is just being overweight. There's two parts to this. There's the health component, which is, there's no question. It's terrible for your heart. You get diabetes, your hip and your right. knees are undergo. So nobody's going to argue with that. But from an aesthetic right. standpoint, who are we to say that if you're overweight, it's unattractive. If an individual is overweight and they're healthy, which is kind of an oxymoron, but let's just say hypothetically, then so be it. God bless you. Be happy. If you're happy, overweight, great. But more often than not, patients who are overweight are not generally happy with the way they feel and look, aside from the medical component. So when did you start to feel like you didn't like being overweight? When I turned about 16 or 17, I mean, all through middle school, I was bullied and bullied and bullied about being overweight. I was called names all the time. And it hurt me, but not as much in high school. And, you know, then there was a cute boy in class. You know, Mm -hmm. there always all these things came up. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I feel I'm not cute. I thought I am not cute. I hardly I don't fit in my desk. That was also like, oh, my goodness. Like whenever I would walk into class, you know, there were six periods when I would walk into class and it was a class that had a desk with a chair and it wasn't attached I was like oh yes and I would always feel why why is this like wonderful to me this you know this why is it an issue that you know I have to have a a desk that's not attached to the to the seat you know and so I started feeling like out of place 
I started feeling like I didn't want to hang out with the girls because I didn't want to go out to eat with anyone either because I felt like, oh, I eat, I eat too much. And so in high school, it was definitely an issue. 16, 17 prom, I went to prom overweight and I never forget it because it was just a part of, you know, it was something significant back then in my life. And I was like, wow, here I am at prom, a size 26, 28 dress. 26, 20. How much did you weigh at prom? May I ask? Is that rude? I'm just pre- yes. No, at prom, I, I want to say I weighed about, oh gosh, what, 345, 350, I want to say. So, so, okay, so you did that and then it's kind of kind of clicked for you. And then the question then is, what did you do to, okay, so you had that, those moments. And then what, it, what was your journey? I refer to get to the top of the mountain and then work your way back down the mountain. So, so what did you do to work yourself back down to the weight? How much, let's, let's throw something. How much do you weigh currently? Right now I'm at 245. 245 and you're 5'10", right? 5'10", correct. That's amazing. So you have lost over 200 pounds, which is an incredible and extraordinary feat. So congratulations so what did you do so you started you're like okay this is this is not working so what did you do to yeah, what, this, yeah what was the trigger what made college. you said basta what made you just said enough i'm always curious to know what that thing is that's like done i wasn't happy i i um i came to points in my life where i did not want to leave my house i would just want to go to school and come back and i I didn't want to hang out with my family. I didn't want to hang out with friends. I did not want to leave the house. I didn't feel, I felt like, why am I going to go out of the house? I'm just like some ugly fat person. Like, why? Like, no, like, why am I going to leave? And my clothing, and it wasn't like, and I just felt like it wasn't me. It wasn't me. You know, like I would walk around and see girls and be like, this, like, I, I would see a girl wearing a jean jacket with hoops and looking so cute. And I'd be like, this is my style. This is something I would wear. Oh, if I be thinner, I totally wear that. And then I think to myself, why if I'd be th- like, why can't I just do it now? And so what like, did you do? I, I want to wear this. So and what, so I what did you my do? Mom, I, I told my mom, I said, mom, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And I really, I really want to lose this weight and I want to change my life. And she said, well, why don't we look into getting the gastric sleeve? And that's when I um, took classes for the gastric sleeve and I had to lose about 45 pounds before I got the procedure done. And at that point it was so easy for me because it was just, I'm getting this, to, I'm losing these 45 pounds to, to start, you know, a healthier life and, and to get this procedure, it's going to help me lose even more weight. And that's, that's how it all began, basically. Okay, so this brings a second point. So there's a lot of people out there, because everybody in this country likes to have an opinion, even though their right. opinion was never inquired. And they'll say, oh, my God, I can't believe you lost all that weight. You didn't even earn it. You didn't go do diet right. and exercise, which, in my opinion, is right. a bunch of bullshit. Because the reality is the only thing that matters, and I said this off, off, uh, off uh, mic, is... No one gives a shit how you lost the weight. The only thing that matters is you lost the weight because at the end of the way, the only thing that matters is your health. And the reality is that for a lot of people, it doesn't matter what the reason is. They just can't do it alone without some assistance. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting assistance to get to where you need to go. And I mean, I want to say it again and again, and I'll say it every time we have a subject, this subject, which is it's better to do whatever it takes to get there than to continuously have excuses. I have seen patients in my office like a revolving door that come to me mm-hmm. once a year, overweight, and they want to mm-hmm. have a surgery done. And what do I tell them? You need to go lose 40 pounds before I'll operate on you, which they're unhappy right. about because they just want me to fix them. And then they'll come right. back a year later, and I swear to God, they're the same weight, sometimes mm-hmm. more. And what do they say? I've been trying to lose by diet and exercise. Go get the surgery, bariatric surgery, when done in the right patient, and you are the ideal candidate. I mean, it's like literally life-saving. It is. It saved your right. life. How long did it take right. you once the sleeve was on to lose the rest of your weight? Oh gosh, once the sleeve was on, in a matter of in a matter of eight months, I lost about 120 pounds. Wow, that's incredible. You, yeah, yeah, that's so, a person. So, so then. So yeah, the, exactly. Alejandra, so the next question, because I'm going to ask the questions as people are going to ask, which is, okay, uh-huh. so did as a result of the surgery, so you use that surgery as a segue, did it help you change your eating habits, right? Because what got yes. you what got you there, let's be honest, was you had poor eating habits. You ate right. carbs and ate late and ate sugar and whatever. Ate for fun. <laughs> so you got, the, right. you got the sleeve, and I'm going to elaborate to people who don't know what the sleeve is. The sleeve is essentially 
you know, we went through all kinds of iterations of bariatric surgery, bariatric surgery being a whole world of doing surgeries to help people lose weight. The first of which was called a gastric bypass, which was where we reconnected the plumbing in your intestines. That, of course, worked, but had a bunch of issues. Sure. And was then that the Ruin Y The Ruin Y, of course, is one kind of gastric bypass. Then we advanced to, everyone remembers, 1-800-GET-THIN, which was the lap band, that phenomenon, which, again- I remember the lap band. Yeah, I remember those guys. They went to jail. So, <laughs> so that had its benefits, again, had a bunch of issues. And now we're at the phase, which is called the gastric sleeve. And a sleeve is. Didn't they do a bubble too, where they'd put a bubble down in your stomach sure and that, inflate I, it to take up space? I'm sure that happened. That, that was probably a couple of weekends. But, <laughs> but, but what we're at now, which seems to be currently the most desired procedure, is called a sleeve, whereby which you remove, physically remove, a segment of the stomach which has expanded. And so what that does, and correct me if I'm wrong, it makes people feel full very quickly. And. Yeah. You just can't eat as much. And that as a result, hopefully you recognize that sensation and then you eat less. Is that correct? Yes, correct. So what did you do to change your eating? Like, so lifestyle, tell me about lifestyle. What happened there? Well, lifestyle wise, I, get, I took the classes before um, I, w I did the procedure. And so it was all about, you know, intaking protein. So when you have a plate in front of you, they always say, Start with the beef first, then the vegetables or the salad, and then you go to the starches, any potato, any rice. And by that time, you're full already, so you don't even eat the starches. Yeah, great. That's actually and a great so, pointer. I wish I had gone to that. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's basically what I tend to do as well. You know, when I get a, a plate in front of me, I start with the beef, then I nibble on the salad, and I eat the salad. And once, like, the starches come, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of full. I'll just, you know, try a little bit of this mash. But I just don't eat it. Wow. Now, did you, did, was there a process of exercise while you were retraining your eating habits? Did you start walking or, because you said that I, yes, getting there, around was difficult. There has been exercise. Right. No, no, there has been exercise. Um, I've been, so when I, I saw Dr. Raban in August of last year, uh -huh. and I said, you know, I, I'm, I also want to get a body lift. And he said, you know, again, you have to lose 50 to 70 pounds. And so, so hold, hold on one there, second. I'm going to interrupt you there because I think it's an important yeah. segue. Why on yes. earth would I tell you, a cash-paying patient, that you yes. need to lose more weight and potentially have you go next door? What was the point of what because I told you? Because you want me to look my absolute best and you and what, genuinely care for me. And what was the issue at hand? What, what did I tell you was the problem with the extra weight? The extra it, it was, weight, I'm trying it, to say. It was that you wouldn't have gotten as good an outcome because you weren't fully right. deflated. You were still, Correct. While, while you had lost a tremendous amount of weight and your arms Correct. and your breasts were prepared and ready, your trunk right. was not yet ready. And the key yes. and the emphasis we're going to make is that you can't just do stuff surgically because you want to. Do you have an ideal weight, Dr. Raban? No, there is no ideal weight because okay. this is the key with massive weight loss. Let me explain this. Every mm -hmm. single patient looks totally different. There are patients who come to my office, they've lost 100 pounds. They're still overweight, yet all of their weight is on their thighs. Their torso looks that of someone who weighs 96 pounds. Oh, there are wow. women who come in, men and women, who come in and they're 100 pounds weight loss and all of the weight is still stuck in their belly. So everyone has a pattern of distribution. And so, for example, Alejandra came and her arms and her breasts which are the things that we're going to move into and discuss is what we're doing first. Whereas her body, which is what I normally do, the trunk first wasn't ready yet because she needed to lose more weight. So I interrupted you. I apologize, but you were saying. No, no problem. And so I, I said, okay, well, I want to get this done. This has to get done. And I want to get it done and, and I want to get it done with you. And so I said, well, let's start, you know, changing up a little bit because after a while it gets so boring to just have protein shakes and you know I, you get before i started before i got the a gastric sleeve i was on pro i was trying to lose weight all, as well i did probably about four months of trying to lose weight so i had that before and then afterwards when i said i have to change things up now i have to go to the i have to go more to the gym i have to add days at the gym i have to you know um 
not have this dessert here or there. I, you know, I have to, um, iced coffees, I'll have one every other, you know, week or so, you know, and so I started changing that up as well and it helped me lose weight. And since the last time you saw me, I've lost an, an additional 42 pounds. Awesome. Whoa. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Man, I'm proud of you. So what, so <clears throat> we're going to switch gears and talk about what it is that we're planning to do. So you're on, you're, you're scheduled to have surgery and you're having the surgery, uh, uh, we're doing a breast lift with implant as well as a brachioplasty or arm lift or arm tuck, correct? Oh, wow. So yes. let, let's talk about what it is that, what were the issues that you had? So the arms, almost every, like, I can't tell you, almost every single weight loss patient complains about their arms because it's the one thing yes. it's very hard to hide. You yes. can hide your belly, you can hide your breasts, you can hide your thighs, your arms, unless you're constantly wearing a long sleeve shirt, which... We live in California, for God's sakes. It's very hard to hide. So, yeah, well, but that's me, doctor. I know. <laughs> that's I definitely me. <laughs> I know. So, so we were going to what we're what we're dressing is loose skin. Some people refer to them uh, as their bat wings or, or <laughs> lunch what, lady arms. Yeah, but we're going to be removing the excess skin through uh, excising the skin and fat, and it it it's incredible what it does not only aesthetically but functionally. Because your extremities are what allows you to move and exercise. And when your arms don't carry an extra two, three pounds of resistance, you're going to do amazing. Right. And as far as the breasts, well, of course, you lose a lot of weight. Your breasts don't look the same way anymore. They've lost a lot of volume. And they've also become begun to sag and lose shape. So our, our goal at the end of the day with breasts is simply that. We want improved shape and we want improved or enhanced volume. So you have to do that through two separate surgeries. I mean, two separate, meaning two parts at the same time, mm -hmm. which is a breast lift, fixing the shape, and a breast aug, fixing the volume. So those are our anticipated surgeries that we have on board. Um, we're going to take a little quick break, and then we're going to come back, okay. and we're going to want to talk about a few other things like what her expectations your are. Your expectations, your excitement, your enthusiasm, and last but not least, the uh, recovery I anticipated. So hang tight. And we're back with Plastic Surgery Uncensored. I'm Monique Marvez, and this is Dr. Roddy Raban, and we're going to revisit Alejandra on her journey. Alejandra, so next question I have for you, which is, so a lot of people say, all right, well, you lost more than 200 pounds, which is incredible. Shouldn't you just be done? and be happy, people don't really understand. You had issue number one, which is I was overweight, 400 plus mm -hmm. pounds, and that created a world of insecurities. And now I have yet mm -hmm. another set of insecurities, which is now I have all this loose skin. And can you just elaborate a little bit why now that you're 250 pounds, why can't you just go live your life? What, what's, what's the matter? I guess because all my life I've been overweight. And so now that I have all this excess skin as well, I think it also has to do with appearance. I do not leave the house without a long sleeve. You know, it'll be 100 degrees outside, and I have a long sleeve on because I don't feel good about my arms. Um, certain uh, clothes I want to wear, it just doesn't look good on me because, you know, everything is flappy. And, and, and I think you know, I'm 23 years old. I think, oh, my gosh, at 23, I want to wear this. I want to wear that. I just want to you know, experience things and do things that, I, you know, you want to do at 23. And I don't because I just don't feel like I'm there yet. I don't feel fully myself yet. Have you, you had know. have you had people say to you, like, because they can't tell, like, because you've gotten done such a good job of camouflaging that they can't tell that, like, what do you mean you want to have plastic surgery? Are you crazy? You're 23 oh, years all old. The time. Like, so there's a lot of resistance, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, to having surgery? Yeah. Um, not really, because I guess they're not the ones who see themselves in the mirror naked like I do. You know, right. I, I, I get it all the time. My, my sis, I have a, I have four sisters, and one of them tells me, you look fantastic. Because she's my little cheerleader. She's always telling me how great I look, how great I look, because I'm great at hiding it. You know, like when I, when I wear um, my jeans, when I wear my tights, like everything. When you see me with clothes, you would never think I look the way I look naked. You know, very flappy. Like my arms, like when I'm wearing like a jean jacket, they look very nice and firm. You know, they look a little large. They look, everything just looks like it sets well. But I mean, when, when this is all off, it's definitely right. and, not and, like and, that and at and all. That's, and that's really important when it comes to personal intimacy with I was yourself just say that. and intimacy with a life partner. I think that's kind of like, you know, at the end of the day, you're doing it for yourself. And, you know, there's this argument, oh, well, whoever falls in love with you will love you as you are. Well, that that's not true. 
That's the ridiculous. But you want to feel well. You want to feel confident within your own skin, which then exudes a sense of connectivity to your partner. Um, and, And so you touched a little bit upon it. So your sister is your part of your support team. I'm assuming your your family's on board as well. Correct. Yes. And then yes, yes. the big issue, of course, is all right. Oh my God! I listened to this young lady, Alejandra. She inspired me. But there's a real there's a real issue at hand, right? This costs money, and so at the end of the yes. day, you know, a lot of patients who lose a hundred pounds, they want to go in, they can see the daunting price tag, and they want to do what? They want to do all of it in one set, and they go to some cockamamie place because it's very expensive, mm-hmm. and then you end right. up. What do you do? You end up exchanging yet one more insecurity for another. So you went from being overweight, unhappy, losing a ton of weight and loose skin, unhappy, to having horrible plastic surgery with ugly wounds and unhappy. And none of it ends right. up being happy. Happy. <laughs> so right, what, right, what, right. What, what happened when you and I talked? You came in with all this loose skin, which is your arms and your thighs, your belly, your back. And we said what? What did we decide? We decided that we were going to do what I'm not happy about the most. Staging it. First. We're going to go about it incrementally. Yes. Because yes. if you, you can, you like all things in life, you could easily walk into an office. And to be honest with you, it's probably the, what, what we're going to do is probably the rarity rather than the norm, which is you can walk into an office and say, listen, I lost 100, 200, 300 pounds. I hate the way I look. And they're going to, no matter what, try to encourage you to get it all done. Because at the end of the right. day, you may not come back. And that's lost money on the table. But just right. think about it for a second. If I'm going to take eight plus hours to do your arms and your breasts because I'm the only one operating on you, how is it that mm-hmm. another doctor is going to do your arms, your legs, your thighs, I mean your belly, your breasts, all in the same time? How? How's that, how's that physically four, possible? Four arms? He's got four arms? He's okay. not. <laughs> no, he's got... He's got two or three assistants. Mm-hmm. That's number one. So you go in and see Dr. X and Dr. Y and Z, or better yet, his tech, who's not a doctor, are all present. And number two, everything is done hastily in a hurry. So you get low, right. low quality, high volume surgery. I, I have to ask, is it legal for a tech to, cl- to close a wound? Listen, it's not legal, but I will tell you it happens in 90% of the ORs. Because what happens is you're in surgery and you're a surgeon. And this is very labor intensive, closing, you know, 12 inches of a scar on each arm. Plus, it's time consuming. And the reality is that most guys don't want to sit in the OR. Time is money. The longer it takes, the more you have to pay. So they just they just half-ass it. So, again, I want to underscore this. So good for you for having lost the weight. And good for you for having realized that if you want an Hermes bag, you need to save money. And you need to do it right the first time. So I'm Definitely. assuming you've gone about this in a financially responsible way because, you know, this is going to be a long journey financially. And I'm sure you've thought about it and you're not going to be in house poor or debt because you've planned right. it. No, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. So that's another yeah. thing that we want to underscore because you get people who put their house and mortgage and everything and leverage it for cosmetic surgery, which is just insane. Just insane. Right. So, so you're doing your, your arms and your breasts, the AUG and, you know, shape and volume, as you say, right. doctor. And what is ballpark? What is that going to cost her? Well, arms and, you know, arms can range anywhere from 10 to 20. Mm-hmm. And breasts can range anywhere from 15 to 25. Now, those are reasonable numbers. You get anything significantly more mm-hmm. or significantly less, and there's a problem. And it usually is on the end of significantly less. When something is too expensive, that's usually a label issue. Like, oh, I went to this doctor. He was on TV. Okay, if you want to pay for so-and-so, that's fine. Alternatively, when something's really inexpensive or sounds like, I don't understand, there's a reason for that. It's, it, it, I mean, this is surgery. They're going to cut back, cut corners on the anesthesiologist. They're going to cut corners on your surgery environment, the surgery center. They're going to cut back on your recovery. They're going to do it quickly. It's going to be half ass. There's no question about it. Are you excited? Oh, so excited. Yeah. It, I feel like it's uh, the beginning of a new chapter and practically almost a new life, really. Um, I'm very, very excited. We're, we're very excited for you. I always feel very blessed and very lucky to be able to participate in your 
transformation in your journey because at the end of the day, I feel like I was given this um, skill set to help you into the next phase. And I think you're very worthy and a, a lovely young lady. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Congratulations. We all look forward to seeing your after pictures. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. It's quite inspiring. 200 plus pounds. Your journey is, uh, you know, it's, it's, you've got a ways ahead of you, but you're, you're going. You are on this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Raban, it seems like family support is a big component when these people are on this weight loss journey to their new lives. Is that an important thing? Yeah, I mean, I think this is, that's really a, one of the major take homes is that you can't, uh, you, you, you can't do, journeys like this alone and that having people around you is very very 